Our classic segment salutes one of the finest in a long line of great 49er receivers, Gene Washington. But we begin with a look at a great defensive player from San Francisco's proud past, linebacker Dave Wilcox. Lunchtime in Junction City, Oregon. At home with one of the greatest outside linebackers ever to play pro football. Today he's a mild-mannered husband and father living the good life on 180 choice acres of Oregon farmland. But yesterday, his disposition was a little different. His name? Dave Wilcox. Defensively, I had an area, and I did not like people in that area. Uh, so when I prepared to play the game, it was to keep everybody out of that area. Nobody was going to run in my area. Nobody was going to pass in my area. This was my spot, and nobody was welcome there except me. His opponents remember him for three things. First, his intensity. My first experience with Dave Wilcox was not on the field, but when uh, I was drafted by Minnesota, I went up to watch the University of Oregon alumni play their varsity team. And Wilcox was beating up the varsity so bad at Oregon that they wouldn't let him play in the varsity game anymore, in the, in the alumni game. His intensity was complemented by an active football intelligence. He used to talk to himself. Um, what do they do here? All right, what are they going to try to do? He's constantly talking, you know. You didn't know if he was talking to you, the guy next to him. And you come to find out he's talking to himself, but constantly talking to himself. He was a stud. And like other studs of his era, Dave Wilcox didn't hesitate to use a little intimidation. Basically, Dave played the game from his spot as an outside backer, like Dick Buckus played it for the Bears in the middle. Because the rules weren't quite the same. You could hit people anywhere, anytime, in the face, in the neck, whatever it took to make the play, as long as it was aggressive within the rules. We had one particular play where uh, we need to beat them, otherwise uh, we don't get in the playoffs in 68. I think it was the second or the last game of the season, so there's no way I was going to lose the game. But uh, I think late in the game, I take off on a kind of a scramble, and, and I get to go all the way to the end zone, clear in the left end, corner of the end zone. Dave Wilcox, linebacker. Two trophies in his collection speak volumes about his career. One is from a television network, naming him to their all-pro team at the wrong position. The other is from the Players Association, selecting him as the NFL's Linebacker of the Year. I understand how the New York media worked. I was a very low-key guy, kind of down to earth and really didn't wear jewelry and, you know, go to nightclubs and go to Hollywood all the time. But what's very important is that your peers recognize that maybe, you know, you weren't too bad and, uh, and then you go play in the Pro Bowls. His peers voted him into seven Pro Bowls in eight seasons, where he once again made lasting impressions. I went outside the defensive end on a pass route, and I believe, if I remember correctly, he knocked my helmet off. It was the first time I've ever had my helmet knocked off during the game, and, uh, I think he rung my bell a little bit, and I got up rather slowly and began, for the first time, I began to think, why am I out here? Why am I subjecting my body to this type of punishment? Which is probably what the Kansas City Chiefs were wondering one night in 1971. That was the first time we were over on the Monday night game. We didn't really know how to act, and we got beat. Of course, our Kansas City was a very good football team. By game's end, the ABC broadcast team was singing praises to their newfound all-world linebacker. Well, that was nice of Howard. You know, guys thought a lot of Howard. <laughs> uh, a very knowledgeable person about something. It wasn't football. 
The fact is, it didn't take exceptional insight to recognize a truly exceptional linebacker. Dominated people. Dick Butkus was great because he dominated people. Dave Wilcox dominated people. I could find a piece of film every week where he'd take a guy and carry him over and lay him on a pile. And who did that with a 265-pound man? And he never knew he was doing these things. I mean, I can remember John Mackey as great as he was. All the great tight ends had come into Keysar Stadium or wherever we'd go. They never caught Diddley. They beat us every other way, but nobody could get off the line. A lot of linebackers have that same size, speed. Uh, I can recall watching Wilcox between plays. He had a way of crossing his legs and look nonchalant. But the fact is, once that ball was snapped, he brought an intensity, whether it was on a blitz, whether it was on a, a covering a man, or making the tackle. I, I, I gotta say, Dave Wilcox is everything and played the position as well as anybody that's ever played the position. Wilcox was the kind of guy that thrived on pressure. He would want you to come to his side. Don't run away from me if it's third and one. Come to my side. Challenge the best. Dave Wilcox retired from the game in 1975. His life today is as rich and sweet as the cherries in his orchard. A footballer turned farmer at peace with all around him. He's just a right man at peace with himself. But if you'll talk to any tight end that ever played this game, he is the meanest, most ornery guy that ever played the game. I think he is the best outside linebacker that has ever played the game by a long way. Indeed, one must wonder why this punishing perfectionist is not yet in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh, I definitely think I should be there. I did what I was asked to do as a player. And whatever I did, basically probably did better than anybody. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging at all, but nobody ever ran to our side. If they ran, they would never make many yards. It all kind of comes back to this, that this is, this is my spot. And uh, it's kind of like you're king of the hill and nobody's going to knock you off of it. <laughs> When the 49ers selected Gene Washington in the first round of the 1968 draft, they were getting much more than a polished receiver. They were getting a player with a unique insight to the game. I played quarterback through my junior year at Stanford. So when I made the switch from quarterback to receiver, as a receiver, I thought the way a